we make our beginning in the name of the triune God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in confessing our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And receive the absolution. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy upon us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment that we deserve. So that we may, we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and the holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became a man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him and, according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we, by our words and actions, serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread is made from countless grains, so also are we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. We continue with instruction on the doctrine of Holy Communion from Luther's small catechism. And I will speak portions and you will respond accordingly. First, what is the sacrament of the Holy, of Holy Communion? Christ. 
And where is this written? Second, what blessing do we receive through this eating and drinking? Third, how can eating and drinking do such great things? And fourth, who then is properly prepared to receive this sacrament? Testament lesson for this evening is Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. <clears throat> then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I, lead the, when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our epistle lesson. Is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself, then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson is taken from Mark chapter 14. And on the first day of unleavened bread, 
when they sacrificed the Passover lamb. His disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went into the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord. Please join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Frankly, from a human perspective, it was not going to end well for him. Jesus knew that he would be betrayed. 
betrayed by one of his own disciples. Jesus knew that he would be killed in a very brutal manner. But most importantly, he knew that on the third day, he would rise again. On this night, Jesus was not just hosting any meal with his disciples. Jesus was hosting the Passover meal, a meal that Yahweh himself had first hosted some 1,500 years before Jesus hosted this meal. The Passover meal, the original Passover meal, commemorated God's mighty rescue of his people from their slavery in Egypt. It commemorated how God mercifully passed over the homes of the Israelites that were marked with the blood of the Lamb. There's one very important point we need to keep in mind. The Passover, the defeat of all the Egyptian gods, the deliverance of the Israelites, and the sending of his son to die on the cross to deliver you and me. All that God has done throughout the history of this world, all that God has revealed to us that he's done in the Holy Scriptures, every single thing we see that God has done, he has done for you. That's the critical thing to remember. He uses all of his power and might for the benefit of his people to save them. He used his power and might to deliver the Israelites from slavery under the Pharaoh. And he used his power and might to deliver us from the grip that sin has on us through the death of his son Jesus. Now, at that first Passover, it was no mistake that God commanded that a lamb be slaughtered. He clearly intended the slaughter of that lamb some 1,500 years before Jesus, that that lamb was to foreshadow the slaughter of the one true lamb of God that, as John the Baptist said, takes away the sin of the world that was to come some 1,500 years later. And at that Passover, that first Passover, it was no mistake that God commanded that the blood of the lamb be painted on the lintel and the doorposts of the Israelite houses. And if you trace it out with your own hands, when you take the blood and you've got a pot of blood sitting here, a pot of lamb's blood or goat blood sitting on the ground underneath the, the lintel of the door, and you take that uh, blood and you swish it with some leaves, whatever you might be using, and you put it up on the, the top lintel piece, and you come down and get some more and put it on side, uh, the side post, what you've done is you've just made the sign of the cross. Think about that. The lamb's blood, the sign of the cross, that is what God saw when he passed over his people and saved them. It's no mistake that the sign of the cross and the Lamb's blood saved his people. He did it then, 1,500 years before Jesus, and now God used it again 1,500 years after Jesus. But the big exception is now it was not just the sign of the cross, it was literally the cross that the Lamb was shedding his blood on to deliver his people. It's also no mistake that God made very clear that all who are saved, everyone from Adam and Eve, or the the first people created to us today, and to the last person that has a breath of life in this earth, that all who are saved are saved by trusting in God's promises. Everyone who is saved is saved by faith in God's promises alone. God's chosen people, the Israelites, were invited to participate in this very first Passover. And it's no mistake that God invited people that had no hope, people that had no chance, people that had no opportunity to free themselves from slavery to Pharaoh. These were people who would be born a slave, who would live their whole lives as a slave, and they would die as a slave. These were people that had absolutely no hope of freedom. These were people who would know nothing but slavery their whole lives unless unless someone acted from outside of them and came to deliver them, to save them from their slavery. And that is exactly what God, what Yahweh, did for them. It is also no mistake that Jesus invites you and I who are slaves to sin to his supper, to the Lord's supper that we'll be receiving in just a little bit. We are people who, like the Israelites, are born into slavery. Not slavery to Pharaoh, but we're born into slavery to sin. We are the people who, like the Israelites, have no hope, no chance, no opportunity to free ourselves from our sins. We are people who, just like the Israelites, we are born a slave to sin, we live as a slave to sin, and we will die as a slave to sin unless someone comes from the outside and acts to deliver us. And that is exactly what God did, what Yahweh did for the Israelites, and that is exactly what God, what Yahweh, what Emmanuel, what Jesus, what God incarnate has done for us. Now here's the invitation from Jesus to you 
to come to the Lord's Supper. And there's no mistake about who he invites and why. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who are about ready to just give up on this life. You who are so burdened with cares and worries of this life, come and receive the forgiveness of sins. Come and have your heavy burden taken from you by the one who wants to take that burden from you. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who are addicted to alcohol or drugs or pornography, and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who might abuse your spouse, your children, or your parents. Come and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who have ruined and devastated other people's lives. Come and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who sing praises to Jesus on Sunday, and yet on Monday through Saturday, you could care less about your neighbor. Come, he says. Come and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who have not been faithful to your marriage vows, and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who use the Lord's name in vain. You who call upon him daily, asking him to damn things because of, they didn't meet your expectations. Come, he says, and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper in repentance and contrition. Come and sorrow for your sins and be forgiven. Come to the Lord's Supper, you who are sinners, you who have no hope of saving yourselves from God's wrath. Come, eat, and be forgiven. It is finished, Jesus said, just before he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And with those three words, he did what we cannot do. With those three words, he set us free from slavery to sin. And as you come to the table, don't say, I'm unworthy. For Christ invites you to come to his table to make you worthy through the forgiveness of sins. Don't say, I'm not good enough. Because Christ's perfection and Christ's righteousness is now your perfection and your righteousness. Don't say, I've sinned too much. See, your sin is no longer your own. Your sin is Christ's sin. That's what he took to him with the cross. He took your sin with him to the tomb. And when he rose from the dead, your sin stayed in the tomb, and that's where it still is. He rose perfect and sinless, and we join with him in his perfect and sinless resurrection. Don't say, I don't have a strong enough faith, because Christ had a perfect faith in your place, and his faith is now your faith. And when you come to his table, look at the place setting. Look for the little card that's got your name written on it, and that card will have your name written on it, and your name will be written in the blood of the Lamb. It's a personal invitation he made just for you. It's a personal invitation to a meal that costs you absolutely nothing because he already paid for that meal with his body and blood given and shed for you. So when Jesus invites you, come to this meal and receive in faith what he has promised, the forgiveness of sins through his body given and his blood shed for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we offer to you our common supplications for the well-being of your holy church throughout all the world and for this congregation gathered in your name. Guide and govern your church by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the truth in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. As your Son, our Lord Jesus, commanded us, Enable us to love one another in sincerity and truth. Be merciful to all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Preserve all who travel. Satisfy the wants of your creatures. And help those who call upon you in any need that they may have patience in the, mid that they may have patience in the midst of suffering and, according to your will, be released from their afflictions. We praise you for the abundant mercy that you have so richly provided us, blessing us not only with daily bread for our bodies, but also with heavenly food for our souls. Grant that your living and powerful word abide in our hearts. Let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Deliver and preserve us in the saving faith, and grant your blessing upon us all. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.